Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture. Let's keep going and let's cover AI ML data lingo part two and we're going to cover data types. All right, so there are generally three data types and I highlighted this slide as with one star here to indicate again, it's an important um, concept to understand and you might find it on the AWS machine learning certification exam. So the first data type is what we call it quantitative or numerical data type. The second one is qualitative or categorical data type. And the third one is ordinal data type. Again, it might sound a little bit scary, but in, you know, in essence of it, it's actually very, very simple and pretty basic. So numerical data, also known as quantitative data, represents a measurement or count. For example, if you want to measure, let's say, the weight of somebody, or let's say a blood, for example, pressure, or if you wanted to know how many dollars, for example, or let's say someone's, you know, like bank account, for example. And within quantitative or numerical, you might find two categories, either discrete or continuous, okay? So that's within the quantitative or numerical. The second one is what we call it qualitative or categorical, basically, data type. And within the categorical data type, it represents that could be, or represent, it basically data that represents data that could be divided into groups, okay? So either we have, let's say, the race, or let's say sex, for example, or let's say age group, or let's say education level. These are kind of, you know, different categories. For example, someone with, let's say, a bachelor's degree, or let's say no degree, for example, let's say master's degree. These are different categories, okay? So categorical data can take numerical values. This is actually important, but they do not have mathematical meaning. So you cannot multiple or multiply them together, for example. My apology, this should be multiply. So in general, for example, here, you might find, let's say, uh, an age group, for example, or you might find, let's say, you know, like sex or race. These, we can represent categorical data using numbers. So I can say, for example, let's say, you know, whoever has a bachelor's degree, we're going to give them zero. Whoever has, let's say, master's degree, we're going to give him class one. And whoever has a PhD degree, we're going to have give him class three, for example, something like that, or class two. Okay. So you, they might have numbers. Okay. But, but they do not have much of a meaning. You cannot multiply them or add them together and come up with something meaningful. Okay. All right. The last category, which is what we call it ordinal data. And ordinal data represents a mix between numerical and categorical data. For example, if you wanted to have, let's say, course Udemy ratings, for example, on Udemy, for instance, data might consist of categories such as numbers between one and five. So I actually have categories, but these categories actually have meaning behind it as well. So one star will mean poor rating, for example. Five star will mean great quality course, something like that. And that's where kind of, you know, think of it as kind of a mix between the two, between quantitative and qualitative the categories as well. All right. So let's dig a little bit deeper into each one of them and take a couple of examples. So for the first one, which is the quantitative or numerical data, this numerical data, also known as quantitative data, represents a measurement or count. Again, as I mentioned, weight, blood pressure, and dollar count, and it consists of discrete and continuous. So for discrete ones, which is, again, these two categories are within the numerical one, includes data that are distinct and separable. And discrete data could be counted as integers, for example, how many cats do you have or how many products you have sold? Okay, so these are kind of, you know, discrete basically values and they are still numerical. Within, within it as well, there is continuous numerical too. And these are represent numbers or measurements that are uncountably infinite. Basically, it can go up to infinity and you cannot kind of divide it into different, let's say, integers per se, but here you can have an infinite number on the real number line, which means now I can have, let's say, how much gas did you put in the car, for example? Well, I might have zero gallons, I might have, let's say, 20 gallons, or I can have infinite possibilities between the two. I can actually have 8.40 gallons, or 8.41, or 8.414863. There's basically unlimited number of possibilities, and that's what we call it continuous, basically, data. All right. The next one is the qualitative or categorical data. For example, I have, let's say, one indicates sunny, two indicates cloudy, and three indicates rainy. And as I mentioned, you basically, um, 
uh, have ton tons of examples here such as race, sex, age group, and so on. And, and I mentioned we cannot simply multiply them. For example, here I might have one means single, two means married. I cannot add them together, for example, and come up with something in between. It doesn't work this way. Okay? So that's kind of the important feature when it comes to categorical data. And binary data as well is type of our categorical data, but only consists of two values only, either one or zero, on or off, true or false, and so on. Binary data is very common in machine learning classification algorithms, in which the outcome could be one of two options, let's say healthy or sick, malignant or benign cancer, for example, and so on. All right, and the last one is the ordinal data. As I mentioned, ordinal data represents a mix between numerical and categorical. It's like a course ratings on Udemy. You can have, again, they have numbers, they have categories, but these numbers actually have meaning in between as well. So one star means poor quality, five star means great quality course. The numbers in each category have mathematical meanings, and that's what differentiates ordinal data from categorical data. For example, if you, let's say, take the average of 1,000 reviews of Udemy online, you will end up with an answer that have a meaning. So now I can actually perform mathematical operations on the numbers and come up with something useful, okay? And this does not work if you have categorical data. Again, you cannot, you know, average, let's say, single and married and come up with meaningful results. For example, here, I cannot sum up, let's say, sunny and cloudy and come up with something in between. It doesn't work this way. It doesn't have meaning, okay? All right, okay, and the last category of data, which is I really like to put here because it's very important to um, notice them, these are what we call it useless data, just, you know, unnecessary, irrelevant data. This useless data is a type of data that is discrete and has no relationship whatsoever with the output. We usually drop the useless features from the data set before training the model. For example, let's say if I have, for example, here, this example of data set that it can be used to um, predict whether people on, or passengers on the Titanic are, are going to ha have a probability or can be able to survive or not. Okay, So basically here, as you guys can see, there is passenger ID. This is the target label. That's my survived. So if it's zero, that means, you know, unfortunately they drowned. And if it's one, that means they actually made it and they made it alive. P class, which is the different classes. Here are the different names, for example. Here we have the different sex, male or female, the age. Here we have different features. Again, this is, we're not gonna be, you know, like, like using this data set. Just wanna give you an idea of like, this is an example of data. And this is an example of a useless information, which is let's say passenger ID. That does not mean anything, or it's kind of not related to, let's say my survived class, which is either zero or one. Okay, it doesn't mean much. There is no like direct relationship between, between the two. For example, passenger number five, for example, has a relationship with, you know, with whether he died or, or not. Okay, so that's why we can go there and basically drop that useless data. However, for this data set, something like age, for example, this is an important feature. This is an important data that might accommodate for survived or not. For example, they found that, you know, like if you, are, are, if you are younger, if you have a kid, for example, between one and five years old, you have a higher probability of survival. So actually you can correlate or you can have a relationship or build a model between the age, for example, and let's say survive. Another one is, let's say the sex, for example. So generally when they found that, you know, uh, females, especially with, let's say, with kids or they have families, they were first to come on the, um, on the boats, okay? and basically they have a higher probability or higher chances of survival if they belong to this category. Another one is, let's say, for example, the um, SIBSP, which is basically number of siblings. How many siblings were there? So if you are single, if you are a single male, highly likely you are doomed, basically. If you are, you are, you are going to drown on the Titanic. However, if you have a family or if you have siblings, they are, have higher chances of survival because they were on first, basically, to ride on the boat. However, um, at, at later on, they basically ran out of, um, of boats, and that's where the disaster basically happened, and a lot of people, unfortunately, have lost their lives. Okay, that's kind of, again, an example that I wanted to show you guys, show that show the useless data or useless information and useful information as well. All right, okay, that's all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, we are going to cover the difference between database, data lake, and data warehouse. A very important lecture coming up. Please stay tuned. 
and please enjoy AWS machine learning certification course and I'll see you guys in the next lecture.